College, the Cathedral College. 40 minutes of sheer havoc, carnage, talent and brilliance about to await us here at Confraternity 2024 as Padua College on left of screen will take on the Cathedral College in what is always going to be a ding-dong affair. Unfortunately, the conditions won't see any razzle-dazzle footy, or will there be? Whoever hangs on the footy the longest will come out the victor for mine, and conversions will certainly be premium if they can get across the line. So here we go. First 20 minutes. As Padua will kick off, Cathedral College will run it out from the southern end here at Jack Mansky Oval. Big shout out too, as we can, for Central Queensland University for their sponsorship, along with Strutties. We also thank the NRL and QRL for their support in this carnival every year. Michael Crutcher joins me, myself, John Devine, here in quarterfinal footy. Day two, Michael likes to call it Heartbreak Tuesday. Um, well, it is, but that's, it's, you look at people's favourite time of the week at Confro, and there's all different things. The excitement of morning one, the finals on Friday, but this has got something special to it this Tuesday afternoon, and the Shield quarterfinals. So many great stories over the 40 plus years of Confro have come from Tuesday afternoon. It's uh, almost like golf moving round. Moving day. The yeah, it is. Third day of golf, second day of Confro, second afternoon. We'll add that in. Heartbreak Tuesday and moving round. And this is what Confro's about. Teams here from Brisbane and teams from Rocky. You know, two teams that have been so important to the history of this competition. Padua, right from the start. TCC in the last 20 years or so. But they've brought so much to this competition. And to see these two teams out there, their famous jerseys, Mm. On a wet afternoon in Townsville, this is great Confro stuff. I'm loving both sides. Numbers on their backs makes my job a little bit easier. Even if they become muddy, they put it on the toe. End over end, trying to find the sideline. And it's going to go close to the chalk. He's going to be picked up here by Marjoram. And he'll bring, bring it back into the field plate, 10 metres out from the trial line. You can see the rain starting to pick up again here at uh, Jack Mansky Oval. Day off tomorrow for it to reset and go away, if you don't mind. A heavy contact here coming from Padua. Three defenders involved there. One of those, the fullback and Celine. I remember Jaden Celine from last year. This is the first time Padua been on field one. But I do remember Jaden Celine being outstanding in 2023. And both these teams uh, were quarterfinal winners back in 2019 at Bundy. Padua with the famous win over St. Brendan's when the scores were tied and TCC went through to the final that year. Mm, error here. Uh, down 16-0 on that. Yeah. I, against St. Brendan's. 18-0. Uh, came yeah, back yeah, and, nil, and yeah, scores right. are tied, but one on the basis of... Uh, four tries to three. Four tries to three, yeah. yeah that was it. See, my memory's not so bad. <laughs> on occasions. On occasions, yeah. Remember your manners also, John. I was always told. I always forgot those. Let's go with the Cathedral College. They're 20 metres inside the territory of Apadua College. Score line is nil all. Two minutes. Of, oh, a little knock on from the 13. And Cruz Beasley puts his head down. But uh, you can't really be too upset considering the conditions. Just need to slow down, take your time. Sure, the line of the defence will come up a little bit quicker. But it would be better to have the ball in hand. They now to have to defend. So Padua College on their own 30 will pack this scrum 20 metres in. Just some context around these two teams and their preparations here. And we always say you get to Confro and you're not really sure how these teams match up. Well, TCC's been playing in the Dolphins Cup. They did have a win over St. Brendan's uh, recently. So there's been a bit to see about TCC. Padua coming off an outstanding first 15 rugby union season, undefeated premiers in that comp. But they're back playing league for the first time and they were excellent yesterday and other teams started to take notice when they went through undefeated and get a penalty here, which will Ooh, help them. And that's high in the tackle count too. High, high shot and high tackle four. And of course this morning, and we discussed this a bit earlier, John, way over on field five, the match between Padger and St. Brendan's was a Confro classic, which Brendan's won, but... Debate will rage for some time over whether the try for Padua to win the game in the last 30 seconds was a try or not. The scoreboard said it wasn't. Brendan's won, but Padua were again excellent and put the competition on notice. Well, as I said to Peter Elmore, would we have had the same conversation if that try was disallowed in the first minute, not the last? You really know how to uh, <laughs> get an uh, ending spoiled. Are we building it up, John? We're building it. It is Padua building too. Oh, I don't want to see any 
viciousness. I'll, I'll, and the re- I'll come to you, and I'll tell you why I think about that. Why I made that statement. I'll come back to you shortly. You see, Page is starting to pepper the line. Show and go. He throws a big dummy. There's Atchison, Celine, a dummy half. Kick into the end goal area. It's actually spun back into the field of play here. He's still trying to keep it alive, but that's going to be dead in goal. So that'll be a line drop out here for Cathedral College. I remember losing a semi final in Toowoomba in cricket. I was batting number 11. I went out there and I got out. We need two to win. I got out first ball. We lost by two. And they said, oh, you only need two more runs. I said, you top 10 batsmen, I only need one more run. I wouldn't have even had to bat. So there you go. Well, your therapist did well to give you that excuse. Oh, it cost me a fortune. Still working on it. So as we see, uh, William Ross. So you've got to put it into perspective. You know, yes, yes, denied. But yeah, if it had been a different part of the game, it would have been the same thing. Padua peppering again. No look pass here, but the, the Cathedral defence one on one. They've numbered up nicely. That's with Elijah McKay, the tackler. And I've got to put credit to both sides here. We've been going for five minutes, and I can't remember a handling error yet. Maybe the one here. Yeah, there you go. That's what memory is bad. Celine. Cut out ball. Good grab. Goes himself. Crosses over, and the lock forward will open the account. Ryan McPherson. And Ryan McPherson will open the account. I thought for a moment he's going to offload it and try and promote it, but saw the chalk wasn't far away. He said, I'll take that. And that's what we've come to expect of Padua just these last two days. Just good shape, good control, running good lines here and leaving that gap out wide with TCC just pushing up in defence there. Harley Biles just biting. Nice try to Padua to start. Was it Celine who passed that ball? Because like, I think he actually... Celine. Celine. Uh, because actually he, he saw that there was a gap out wide. He had two men. He decided to cut out ball and give it off to the try scorer in the end there in McPherson. But that was good vision for the, from, from the number one. I don't know whether he's playing full... Is he playing at fullback, Peter? Or is he he's wearing the one or is he going wherever he wants? Because he's such a talent. Just good execution close to the line. <laughs> there you go. So he's, he's a bit like your uh, Gary Jekyll here. Conversion is successful. 6-0. Let's have a look at this. This is the pass. Has a bit of a look. Sees a gap out wide. The player coming out of the line here for uh, Cathedral College in the 22 and Harley Biles allowed that gap to open up and he saw it. Eyes up footy. Goes over and scores a try here on field number one. As I said, Padua College haven't been on field one for the Carnival. So it's great to see, uh, see them here in the quarterfinals. <laughs> And Padua College really are Confro royalty. When you look back at the history of the school and founding members as they get a really handy penalty here, founding members of Confro back in 1980, a school that's produced some wonderful players. And don't forget, the inaugural Confro was in Townsville, inaugural Townsville Confro, 1997, won by Padua College, wow. and a team that included Dane Carlaw and... They've had some great players over the years. Lindsay Collins, of course, playing Origin tomorrow night as another Padua Confro graduate. And they always have a lot of players who return and are part of their Confro setup. Scott Maguire is uh, here. Um, Gary O'Brien coaches, of course. It's not a Confro for Padua without Scott Breen being on the bench somewhere assisting. So they really come back at this school. Oh, Solid puts another player through the gap. Goes all the way to the try line. The big fella, the other back rower this time, Oliver O'Regan. He goes over and puts a try on two minutes after the first one. And Oliver O'Regan too. There's another name when it comes to Padua. Terry O'Regan, Oliver's dad, was a very good player. Played uh, Queensland Cup for many years. His son has run a very good line here. Oliver O'Regan from the Brothers Club in Brisbane. Scores a try that's got really Padger on the front foot here against TCC. Well, I talked about the back rows of this competition lighting up the carnival, and there's two of them scoring meat pies. Just to shout out quickly to our uh, officials for this one, Rowan Lardelli is in the centre. Bridie Prendergast is here on this side of the uh, uh, grandstand side, and Trent Richards on your far side of your touch judge officials for this match. So a big shout out to our referees and touch judges. Um, Big kudos to be able to referee a quarterfinal confro. It's a great honour, so they're doing a great job. And as you can see, the puddles on the side of the field 
not impacting play, but playing cricket might be a different story. But let's see if the conversions... <clears throat> and there's, uh, you won't see it on the screen at the moment, but uh, Oliver O'Regan getting a, a drink of water from his dad, Terry, who's running water in the yellow shirt. And Scott Bree looking pretty in pink. He's got the pink bib on as we see this replay again here from the try. Good things happen when you run to the line. <laughs> Look at this guy. There's, there's no way you can stop anybody. A back row with head tape. <laughs> You're always going to get an extra two metres with head tape. So well done. So well done to Solene setting up two tries now. It's a big... successful. Only just got over the crossbar. Let's check how. TCC here. They did have the win over Brendan's earlier on in the Dolphins Cup. But we tend to throw a bit of the form guide out the window when it comes to this Tuesday afternoon at Confro. We mentioned it before today. This is the fourth game across two days. 160 minutes of football will be clocked up here by the end of this game across those two days. So you can take the form guide, but you have just got to... You can only make comment on it, can't you? Well, you can make comment, but you've just got to look at the body language, the execution oh, on that. That's a falcon. Is going to be a stoppage of play here. That was... I just need to stay away from that man. Yeah, that was very tough. He's uh, going to jump up here, Archie Lloyd, but really putting himself on the line for his team here. And this could be a blow. He's sitting up. Yeah, this could be a blow way. for TCC. But that was a kick with a lot of force there. and just snapped his head back. And uh, yes, while it is confraternity, you want to win for your mates, but Paramount is your health and... Just go off having a break. We've got to rest day tomorrow. Yeah, and the players get looked after played. so well here. They well, get looked after so well. It's taken out of their hands, which is even better. For yeah, mine. great medical treatment here. Doctors, physiotherapists that look after these young men and young women really well, and they're in, they're in great hands. We talk about Padua and the, uh, the great history here at Confro and, of course, uh, TCC as well. Coached here by Tony Martin, uh, former Storm Premiership Centre, his old Storm Premiership teammate Matt Guy is coaching Marymount on one of the other fields at the moment in their Shield quarterfinal match. So these players really get involved in these teams. Tony Martin's son was at TCC uh, last year and played a role in their Confro team. So you see them come back, you see them get involved. TCC uh, got to that grand final in, uh, in 2019 against Iggy Park. Uh, they were looking to win that. They got their Shield last year in the girls which is a, uh, a great moment for the school. Um, and the thing about this is that when we look at the depth of rugby league in the schools, I want to give a shout-out to uh, both principals as well. And I'll do one before Peter Elmore wax me, but uh, a former uh, very good first-grade player, Peter Elmore, played in a uh, grand final for the uh, North Devils, of course, and Rob Alexander, the principal at TCC, a very good NRL referee. So the, the love of rugby league and the importance of it uh, goes right through these schools. And you can see it in the way they conduct themselves on the field. Sleep with the footy. I can just imagine Elmore would have been a nightmare for any referee. There would have been discussions. Always respectful. All diplomatic, of course. I can't imagine a Norse Devils play being anything but respectful. <laughs> so I'll have to take issue there, John. <laughs> okay. So a big hit dislodges the footy, gives Cathedral College the ball back. Just a quick shout-out while we have this scrum pack to... Uh, University of Central Queensland, our major sponsor, CQ University, Strutty Sports, always at the NRL QRL Confraternity of Brothers Club, the Carbine Club, Catholic School Parents Queensland, the Broncos, Dolphins, Cowboys and Titans and our life members. So thank you to the, all of you out there for your support and keeping this carnival, this beast that is growing every year. And it can't be fed enough as we go through with Bateman. No look pass. Carve a gap. Goes through. Carves him up. The fullback will go all the way there. And Matthew Marjoram will get four points back on with six minutes to go first half. Gee, the speed of Matthew Marjoram there in the, in the wet. He put the foot down there. And when you're trying to scout these teams and work out the dangers, sometimes you don't really know the speed until it, it gets you. And just a, a little bite there from Padua. Good cover. They came across well, but just simply too fast, Matthew Marjoram scores out wide and I think on days like today too we talk about these six point tries and four point tries we don't have any breeze today but it's certainly not easy kicking conditions from the sideline but we've got a game here mm. and what I love about the, the small players is they target the bigger players especially in the wet their footing is hard so the 14 there for uh, for uh, Padua George Noon I think it might have been just wrong footed but 
conditions like that, but he ran towards the left hand, the right hand shoulder, and out wide. And he wasn't able to get across there, but it was just a, well, it's his speed, as you said, speed. The little man or big, the uh, big man with speed every day. Uh, speed kills in whatever sport you play, whether it's uh, Tuesday afternoon at Cronfro or any other sport. Speed's hard to beat. This conversion will be really important with five minutes to go on the half. Well, this is the exact same spot uh, that Emmaus kicked the field uh, penalty yesterday. So the score remains 12-4. Just have a look at, it, at speed. He takes it on. He realises there's a big man there and he's going to take him on. Yeah, just gets through and enough room to get to the corner. The teams are going pretty well. There was that drop ball, but we saw a bit more drop ball in the earlier games. They protected oh. that ball pretty well in this game so far, given the conditions. I mean, it's slippery. More scrums and bright blades of grass out there today in the previous games. Of course, of the, the rain and these two sides, they might have played in a little bit of greasy conditions already today, so they might be a little bit more accustomed and thought about how they're going to catch the footy and how they carry it. So all the new dimension. Tackler there is Flynn Dalton. Get some help there from Nate Clark. A little bit of a juggle. Brings it back in. So Padgett committing three men to the tackle. One of those there is Callum Rooney. Get up and play it on the 40-meter uh, line. Halfway line's just there as Elijah McKay finally gets to his feet. Halfway line will be crossed. Good defense here from Padgett. Last tackle now for... The Cathedral College, good defensive set here from Padua. Field, play, field position, not great for the six-tackle option, but mind you, when you can kick like that, it's not so bad. Knockbacks as a referee. And looking for a way through that blue wall. So good chase there coming from Cathedral. Yeah, good set from then. They get Padua starting. Oh. And a, just a knock-on there. So a test for the defense here. Again, with three and a half minutes to go. And we just saw this in the girls' shield semi-final. About an hour or so ago, just some of those little mistakes. They put teams under pressure, give you that instant field position. But the defence was up to it multiple occasions in the Girls' Shield match. So let's see what Padua can do. Their defence has been excellent. They kept St. Brendan scoreless in the first half. Who does that? Yeah, very rare at Confro to keep St. Brendan scoreless. They did that. Let's see what happens here. Blindside play here with a set move from the back of the scrum. So Padua, three minutes remaining on the clock. Don't want to cough up the eight-point lead. They've muscled in the first 20 minutes. Sav Savage, maybe Savage. Not sure how he likes it pronounced. Right in front of the uprights. Ball out the back here. Busby gets the offload. Defence here. Sling one of those. Rolls it out the back. A bit of tunnel ball. Puts it on the toe here. Needs a bounce. Doesn't get it. Still knocked back. Play on. And... The Cathedral College will come up with the footy instead of over the trial line, they're just short of the 40. Well, Jaden Celine, he's uh, a player to watch out there. Sorry. He's quick, he's hungry for the ball. They've got some nice players in this Padua team. Tell me he's in grade 12. He was outstanding last year. He's got another year. Look out. Savage. Get some treatment there. Nate Clark, one of those. Bateman. 15 out, referee screaming for Padua to get on side. Marjoram, the try scorer, and now the back row wants to have a crack here and see Al. Last one, says the referee. They go aerial. Oh, it opens up a mile. The marker defence fell for the dummy in the Cathedral College right on half time. They've reeled in another try, 12 8. Yeah, and Ryan McPherson from Padua just punching the ground there with frustration. He knew that he just bit here. From marker, it wasn't filled behind him. He knew, and that's what this carnival means to these players. They they will only get support from their teammates because they know how hard they try. And these things happen on game day, close to the line when you're getting a bit tired too. So we've got 12 points to eight, a minute till half time. We're setting ourselves up for another. I don't know if we can keep doing these close games, mate. Luckily, I'm the tin man. I don't have a heart. But that's what I love about wet conditions. It's just so close to games. Yeah, and if you can hang on to the footy, they're a good contest. If you keep dropping them, scrum, you know, like, you know, stop it. But when you've got a close game, 
with quality like this and hanging on the footy strikes it and that brings it back to a two-point ball game 12 points to 10 just have a look at this yeah you'd be dirty any day the whopping big gap there and i don't know whether he's actually he's to blame oh uh, well, i shouldn't say to blame but uh the gap was already there he's always going to try and make that that run there we can Barrett. see also when you're trying to defend short sides and open sides in uh nrl there's debate over that not all teams get it right there so oh, totally correct correct so last play first half and we'll go to the break here with padua college breaking out to a 12 nil lead it's 12 10 now cathedral college coming back with Two late tries in the 14th and 18th minute. And both sides will go into their huddles and try and work out what to do in the second half. Back soon. Uh, Jack Mansky able for the second half of this Confraternity Shield match. The Cathedral College on the left. Padua College on the right of your screen. Let's just check the other Shield matches. Here, Padua leads 12 points to 10. The winners of these Shield quarterfinals go to the semifinals on Thursday. So other matches at the moment over on Field 3, the host school, Ignatius Park College, leading Emmaus College Rockhampton 20 points to nil. So Iggy Park looking good there. A, an upset in the making on Field 4 at halftime. St. Patrick's Mackay 10, St. Brendan's nil. St. Brendan's have had two near-death experiences in the pool matches. Can they avoid death again? Over on field five, Iona College, eight, leading Marymount College, nil. So they're our Shield quarterfinals here. And I'd say that, you know, we keep saying this is an open competition, but I still think that teams expected that Marymount and Brendan's would be favourites in those games, slightly. Not big favourites, but they would be favourites. So again, we're seeing here... The uncertainty that uh, this carnival has thrown up. Yeah, I'm sure Mackay would love nothing better than to avenge the loss from 2022 in the Ooh. final against St. Brendan. So, anyway, it's, as we say, 20 minutes is a long time in rugby league, and in these wet conditions, anything can happen. So, who hang, hangs on the footy? A lost ball here or there? Who knows? And it's picked up, and the advantage is played. Anything can happen. So, we'll keep an eye on those games for you. If you want to just zip around the grounds, you can watch the live stream of all six games, whether they be Div 1 or otherwise. Uh, there's no reason to miss out. So kicking before the last, I'll drive it down end over end. The 12 nil lead they had, Padua, been whittled back to a 12 10 halftime score. That halftime break came at a good time for Padua. They're yeah. very experienced coach in Gary O'Brien. He's coached for a long time. He's coached this team for some time and knows them well. Just would have got them to settle down and just reminded them about, you know, the importance to uh, to get through sets, especially in your own half here in these wet conditions. Uh, for Tony Martin and TCC, they really started to take advantage of those mistakes from Padua late. And there's a player just slipping here and, and getting caught high unintentionally, but that's mm -hmm. a penalty. So um, these little things, I think in this match, we're going to see uh, knock-ons and penalties. Uh, maybe have a real impact on uh, on the final result. Yeah, that was late in the tackle count too, that one. So a lot of metres were gained and they'll come again. And Padua, whew, sigh of relief coming from the Padua bench. So 12 10, as I mentioned, uh, two quick tries there to Padua. And I think what needed to be spoken about was just communication because it just didn't be gaps that were left open. Why players maybe not talking to each other or trying to say, look, there's a gap here, close it up a little bit. But like I said, I'm not a coach or a doctor or a commentator for that matter, some would say. But that defensive uh, intensity, and a lot of that also depends on talking. Yeah. And, you know, when you're tired, you're playing your fourth game in two days, sometimes the, the, the talk isn't where you need it to be and, and those little holes can come and... The good eyes up players can just sense when there's a little bit of trouble, and we saw that earlier at defensive line. But Padua, they just looked really good for a team that hasn't played rugby league this season before yesterday. They, they have just done little things well, and they've been moving through the competition nicely. So there's a big, big sort of 20 minutes here because if Padua will get through to a, they've got a day off tomorrow, and they can again. Oh, big dummy! Hang on, Michaels. He makes a breakthrough. Kuma turns him back inside. The winger sets sail. He's on his way to the chalk here. And Padua College, through Tyrone Burr, will come up with a try. Just what they needed after half-time, after they leaked 10. Yeah, well, Damon Humphreys is six there with the bust. And uh, I was thinking before 
he's on the Bulldogs books and he looks a bit like Bulldog Matt Burton with the headgear and the build and he gets through there. And how about the push-up? Gee, you cannot talk highly enough about the value of pushing up in these games. And for Padua, Tyrone Byrne is there. You never, ever can go bad if you're pushing up in attack. And that's what Tyrone Byrne did. And the break from Humphreys... Mm. Was My good. apologies, I called the wrong player there, but yeah, you're right. What a break it was. Yeah, the break from Humphreys was good enough to, uh, to, to get to a try. That's a really important try early on, and it re-establishes the eight-point break here. Conversion successful. Again, a little chat between defenders. Let's close this gap here, but there wasn't much. They just threw a big dummy there. Had the players inside. As you said, Michael Crutcher pushing up in support and straight underneath the dot and the try. He's converted 18-10. They go back to an 8 nil, eight, eight point lead, I should say. And if you want to see the example of a Tuesday afternoon missed tackle at Confro, that was it. Just when you're starting to run really low on reserves and you just can't quite cover that territory like you may have done on Monday morning. And Damon Humphreys took advantage of that and got through a, a narrow gap, but it was big enough. That's all he needed. Half a sniff. It's a good carry there to start off with William Ross. Now with noon so it just goes to show in the space of 10 seconds you could put six on the board so not all lost here for the cathedral college and that's a wet uh day try from the halfway line too they're, they're gold in these conditions yeah, correct so look you said marjoram the try scorer absolutely smashed ball and all and celine again there Leading the kick chase, which is always a quality sign. But there's a gap here. Here's a chance down the break. Left-hand side. Back row, I think that might be Seale. It's Harley Biles, I think, uh, who made the bust. Harley Biles. And then there's a turnover. It showed some nice speed, too. They just caught Padua short on Padua's right side. Yeah, it's 12 months since the last kind of confraternity. And Jaden Celine has probably grown... Six inches. He was a diminutive little player last year. He was elusive. Now he's bulked up. He's big. He's playing in the middle. He's got headgear on. Might have worn the headgear last year. I can't recall. But he was a, he was a tiny little player. And now he's just he's kept the spe speed, the agility, and the skill. But he's just a bigger body. So half a break here. It's closed down here. It's Every driving. year you come to Confro, though, Johnny, you haven't yeah. seen some players for 12 months. And you're just glad you're not feeding them. Because some of these guys have really filled out and developed really impressive uh, footy shapes, and uh, you see the change in the game. Well, it does. Yeah, half the time, we don't have to cook the meat either. There's a chance down the right hand side, Tyrone Byrne goes into touch. He just throw an uncooked carcass on the table, and away they go. Stand back. So, changeover. This is a real test here for TCC. We're down to the last 14 minutes. You're going to have to score twice, it's heaps of time. What you have to do is just realise there's heaps of time. He's got to get through your sets and just really play the field position game in particular here. Realise you're playing uh, a defence for both teams that makes mistakes late on Tuesdays. So you've got to keep patient and just work your way down the field and know you'll get time. All right, McPherson. Started that tackling sentence off there with Humphreys. Just losing his fitting, footing there was uh, Tipman. Could have got a few more metres. Now the lock forward and Beasley. Cuz Beasley. Five short of halfway centre of Jack Mansky Oval. And it's a high shot. Long and deep in the tackle count. Yeah, just slipping up. Yeah. A well, little bit there and a chance for TCC. We said, it'll take your time. You'll get down the field if you just remain calm, which they have here. So let's see what TCC have got in attack and Padua in defence. Seagale. Sometimes you just coaches would just love to have the scoreboard not in sight. Players play the natural game, not the clock. Busby finds a forward runner there in Gallagher. Gallagher loses the footy. One on one strip there from Dalton, but the referee's going to say the second man in. So it'll be a penalty to Cathedral College. 18 10. Do you go for the four? Do you go to two to reduce it by six? And they're going to take the tap which is what I would have done as well. Little. Little! There's <laughs> the upright, a metre short. Barron gives it off to Busby. Marjoram realises he went around his own player. Good thinking there from the fullback. 
Barron. A little bit of a ball pass. Siali will come up with the footy. He'll also come up with three defenders around him. Now they only the one, one of those being Berra. Busby. Noah. Sliding the hands around the ankles there was Nate Clark. Here they're coming in. Busby. Oh, just had to hang on to that one there to Coomba. Now it's the last, says referee Wendell. Chance to go between the forwards. Can he hold him up? I think he might have. I think he might have. Touch judge would probably agree. And that's well held up. Good defence there from Padua. And they're going to give a big rap to uh, the defender. And it was the winger Tyrone in Tyrone Burr. Burr, the try scorer. That was a fabulous one-on-one -on -one tackle. I was just thinking there, as we look at the replay in the bottom corner, that's strong, strong from both players there. It was a real wrestle, but well done to Padua on their defence there. They managed to really hold tight both sides of the field for TCC. And Padua held them out with that last effort over the try line. Another uh, try denied over the, the try line. Your bank's starting to fill up. Oh, crutches if you see Padua. Oh, a little knock on. It was a little knock on. Chas Chasling's remonstrating. It wasn't me. Well, the other man with a footy in hand is a loose carry. Yeah, you can see there's a bit of depth here that Padua have. And one of the observations that sometimes the, the teams from from South East Queensland, especially Padua here coming out of a rugby union season, just the depth that they have to take on the likes of Brendan's and um, Ignatius Park College, St. Pat's Mackay, really specialise in rugby league as that ball comes out the other way. And sometimes some of the teams say that depth, you know, of those teams when you sort of get uh, not so much the spine, but the the rest of the squad can be challenged. But this Padua team's deep. Jarrah Chasling is a very promising centre for Norse Devils. Um, and he hasn't really played much of a part in this game here, but he can turn games very quickly. So we'll just see what happens with some of these players as the game goes on. Chasling, what rings a bell, played probably for the Valleys, I think, too, for a little bit. Yeah, he's oh. been to the uh, Devils um, yeah. junior reps teams and played very well. So Coomba. Takes on his opposite at number six in Humphreys, but Humphreys has got him around. The ankles are dart from dummy half. Again, pad your bodies underneath the footy. And I'll go back 10 metres and have another crack. Their defence has withheld really well. Now we're down to the last quarter of this match. Oh, oh is that a well, the shot there from William Ross? Some suggest with groans from the crowd that it may have been a shoulder charge, but play on. Kick into the end goal area. Has to be tidied up there. He's lost that ball. And the referee's come back because I can't see any celebration. He's going to say double knock on. Yeah, double knock on here. And we're going to head over into the middle of the field. So this is going to be an intriguing finish. We're going to check some scores on the outer grounds too because we only have about nine minutes left in all games. The clock is the same for every ground here. So we have a pretty good idea of what's happening on uh, another field. So... We check the Ignatius Park uh, game as a host team, and we'll watch this attacking set. Here we go. Marjoram. Cover defence there from Chasling. Marjoram is a dummy half. There was a bit of ga a gap outside on the blind side for... Hang on, he's going to try and push forward. He's done it. He's muscled his way through. He had no right to score that try. I thought Padger had him wrapped up, but the Cathedral College hit back through brute force and strength. Have a look at this, Michael Crutcher. This is unbelievable, the 12. There wasn't much on, and the way we've seen the Padua defence so far, William Ross getting in there early, the Padua defence has withheld a lot. That is a fabulous cool. try. You can see the heads go back on the Padua team. They've defended those types of moves without a problem in this match so far, but that time, that's just pure determination. Yeah, the wet synthetic jerseys, hard to hang on to as well, so... Alexio Siali comes up with a try in the 32nd minute. Brings him back within four. Conversion to two. It seems to be two tries to one team, two to the other, and back to two. See, we've got ourselves a, a finish here coming up. Very important conversion. Strikes it well. Adds two to the total. 18 points to 16. Have a look at this. I thought he had him there, the prop forward, the shot there come from William Ross, but 
Ross came back at him to try and get himself underneath the footy, but it was too late. And five Padua defenders were involved well somewhere in that play. Just other, other grounds at the moment in the Confro Shield as the game has restarted here with seven minutes to go. Over on field five, Iona College eight, Marymount College four. So there's another game that's in the balance Ooh. as we have a knock on here. Uh, over on field four, it's still St. Pat's Mackay 10, leading St. Brendan's nil. So there is an upset in the offing there, you would think. And also on field number three, it's still Ignatius Park 20, leading Emmaus Rocky nil. So a knock on there gives Padua a scrum feed. You don't want to concede points after scoring points. Not this quickly anyway. So set play from the scrum. Padua College, 20 metres out. Goes himself. Half a gap. He's going to try and exploit that. Trying to go to the try line. He's going to go away. Backhands it down. Referee says no. He's lost the ball over the try line. And uh, Damon Humphreys, he was over, but he didn't get it now. Referee was right there. Oh. See the replay in the corner. Gee, the great defence. It just got him on the wrong side. A great break from Humphreys, and the penalty comes now. This game is really moving at <laughs> speed now. Two points in it, six minutes to play, and that was a great break from Humphreys. He's a, he's a real danger. A shout-out to that Padua spine. They, they have a high-quality spine there. We've seen already Salian, what he can do. The halves and Damon Humphreys, Brock Dillon, and the hooker and Finn Dalton, a, a very good hooker, also from the North Devils Club. But uh, he is very reliable for Padua in the middle here. So TCC got their own spine that's been helping them as well. So let's see what, who wins that battle five minutes ago. Busby gives the offload to the big body of Noah. Knock on. Knock back, says the referee. Cathedral, another opportunity. Bateman. Bateman almost skips through, but he's denied. 15 out there here, Cathedral. They, they're down by two. They haven't let at any point in this game. Going across, and he's get knocked back. The field of play. Dart from dummy half. Again, Padua bodies. Somehow the pill's been spat out the back. And he's going to say he's lost the ball, and that will be a changeover, or he's stuck with the ball and called held. Oh, what a passage of play. You can hear the crowd here is really getting into this game, and why wouldn't they be? Is, uh... Oh, look out, and a double knock on. But the first scrum fee will go to Cathedral College right in front of the sticks. So four minutes and 20 seconds left, and this is why we call it Heartbreak Tuesday. This is when you come down to the last four minutes of a 160-minute marathon through two days, and there's a Confro Shield semi-final up for grabs. The two-point margin. If you're TCC, you need to get this try. If you're Padua, you have to defend like you've never defended before. Three on three. Tries to, well, three on three in the end there. Actually, it was with uh, Chasling, the, the tackler. McKay will get up and play it. This goes behind Will Barron. Noah has to pick up the crumbs. You can see the rain here at Jack Mansky Oval. Bateman. Big shot in the ribs there coming from his opposite 11 and Nate Clark. Barron again. Goes behind. Has to take the tackle again. Breakdown of communication players in the way. Takes the tackle because the obstruction would have been implied. Busby. Now with the Savage. Savage. One metre out. Looking for the referee. Last tackle. Flat ball. Kiss the shoulder, unfortunately, there for the Cathedral player and Tipman. That'll be a 20-metre restart. Three minutes remaining. Cathedral College will get one more use of the footy. If Padua don't knock it on, they will have one more shot at the title. These are the games where you'd just rather be playing because you just don't feel the same nerves when you play. <laughs> but when you're watching, particularly there's parents here and there's you know, family, relatives here. I mean, they just feel every part of these games. And you understand why. When you're on the field, you just play. Yeah. You don't feel the nerves like you do when you're up watching. You just feel for both teams here. They've, uh, they've put up a great match so far in the conditions. Well, for mine, and I still don't understand why you would take on a job of being a coach. Yes, the uh, kudos if you win a title, but oh, it's, a long, it's a long winter before you get there. And there's a lot of, what do you call it? 
howling and gnashing of teeth, wailing and gnashing of teeth, <laughs> if you will. Halfway lines because last tackle now. So Cathedral College will get one more shot now. This is a high kick. That's gone big. That's gone big. Allowed to bounce end over end. In the end goal area. If they can tackle him in there, it's going to be a line drop out here. What a kick. What a kick here from Padua. Cathedral College will have a line drop out. And all Padua have to do is just run down the clock. The kick was great. And the chase was, was great too. That was an outstanding chase. The Padua players kept coming through. And that is a penalty. And it's going to be a penalty for taking the ball before it breaks a 10-metre putt. 10 metre plane. Yeah. That's the penalty there. You can't touch it before it hits 10 metres. So a bit more drama into this final Tuesday afternoon as TCC just grab whatever ground they can get here for one more crack. They've got a minute and 15 seconds on the ground clock here. First thing I'll do is just hang on to the footy. So the man, Tipman, came off his shoulder early and he's lost the footy. As I mentioned, they've got to hang on to the footy. Rooney Rooney, big carry. Give William McPherson a wrap there. That was his boot tackle there that helped to uh, force that ball free in the fall. Humphreys made two big breaks. One led to a try. The second one denied when he dropped it over the try line. Sure, my apologies, Ryan McPherson, with that tackle. That was uh, part of it. You'll see some of these really experienced players here. Finn Dalton there just trying to settle this down. There's only 40 seconds left. Celine takes it line, throws it dummy, Celine splits the field, goes over. That's the contest. Padua are through to the semis. And that man, Celine, with 30 seconds left on the clock, screams through a gap, slides over the try line, and uh, Padua fans are in raptures. Well, the game ends as it started, and that's with Celine looking very dangerous with the ball in hand. He gets it here. He's got a real hunger for the try line. Just gets a TCC defender again. Just unsure. That's the gap he needs. He only needs some narrow gaps. And look at the way he just got so low to the line over the last sort of five metres or so. That's the way you want to play. And these days, as a siren goes, and Padua are through. You talk about the spine, and Finn Dalton was involved in that play. Celine finishes it off. And the man Humphreys, for mine, he had, he talked about a small gap. Him and Celine only needed a small gap on every occasion they took it. And of course, having against the Cathedral College defence. So, Well, for their semi final opponent on Thursday, that's a problem. You've got to watch Damon Humphreys, you've got to watch Celine as well. I and mean, there's players there you've got to watch as that goes over for a scoreline that doesn't reflect what a nail biter this game was. But congratulations, Padua and a TCC. That was another uh, memorable. Tuesday afternoon. Well, have a rest day tomorrow. We'll be back on Thursday morning. 24 points to 16 in the window. Padua College over the Cathedral College. My name's John Devine, along with Michael Crutcher and Red Quarter Productions. We bid you good night and see you on Thursday.